Welcome back to the Better Men, Better Ball Player Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Cobb. I want to thank you for joining us here on our 72nd episode. Today's episode, we're going to be joined by great coach, Coach Ryan Alexander from Grove City High School in Ohio. Coach Alexander just finished up his 13th season at Grove City. He's got a record of 244-100. and 100. Conference championship, they've got six of them. 2010, 12, 14, 15, 17, and most recently in 21. Been to state playoffs, had two trips to the state finals in 2011 and 2012. Had 70, over 75 players go on to college. He's had three drafted, three two that are still playing. Good chance to talk about some of them, how they just so much of a great culture at Grove City and how these guys come back and how much they do for their current players and future players that they have in camps and things like that. Another thing about Grove City, they've been number one in the state in 2012 and number 17 that same year uh, in USA, USA Today. So uh, Coach Alexander, we get to talk about all things through a lot of his program, great culture he has in Grove City, he has some great coaches uh, work with him as well. And the great community support that they have, and he talks about that service. He talks about the culture and the things that they're doing to continue to uphold the great tradition there at Grove City. And I want to thank Coach Alexander for the great time. We got to talk about some great baseball even um, beyond. I can't wait to the next time that we get a chance to touch touch base and talk some good baseball. And I've really enjoyed it, and um, you're going to learn things from – I, I, for me, just learning things and how very individualized and, and having kids create more ownership, not compliance, but ownership uh, of their of their careers and of their what they're doing each day and how he co- has to continue to communicate those things. And, and, and I love how he's creating such a big-time ownership of his players taking ownership of their careers and – what they're doing to continue to get better. And he does a great job of that, and you'll get to hear all that throughout the throughout the show. And um, just really had a great time, and I'm looking forward to the next time we speak. So I want to get into this. Again, thank you guys for supporting us and really can't thank enough uh, to our sponsor, Netting Professionals. Netting professionals are improving programs one facility at a time. Netting professionals specialize in design, fabrication, and installation of custom netting for backstop, batting cages, dugouts, scoreboards, BP screens, and ball carts. They're also designing and install digital graphic wall padding, windscreen, turf protectors, tur- uh, dugout benches, dugout cubbies, and more. Check out Will Mall Minor Netting Professionals as they continue to provide quality products and services to many recreation, high school, and college fields, facilities, and stadiums throughout the country. Contact them at 844-620-2707 or info at nettingpros.com. Visit them online at www.nettingpros.com or check out Netting Pros on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn for all their latest products and projects. So again, Will Miner, Netting Pros. Can't thank you guys enough. Love being part of the Netting Pros chat family. And Coach Alexander, those Ohio guys and guys that know Coach Alexander, he's a dude. And um, just improve us to... Got better today just learning from him, having a conversation with him, and we'll continue to do that in the future. He's a great guy to, to be able to call. So without further ado, here he is, head coach at Grove City High School in Grove City, Ohio, with Ryan Alexander. Anyone that's thrown some serious innings, we like to have them have some type of shutdown. So um, we, at, we are lucky enough to have a kid that pitched – he pitches in the pros um, with the uh, Angels right now. And then we have another kid that was drafted by the Phillies, and he pitched at Coastal. So we kind of lean on them for a lot of our pitching expertise and thoughts, and both of them are like, at some point, you have to shut down. Um, whether it's two months, three months, we kind of have a standard of it's going to be like eight weeks. So it's usually like a two-month shutdown for – those guys that threw considerable innings Um, just thinking about a freshman right now, he's going to totally shut down. He just got done with the WWBA. Um, He's going to shut down for the next two months. 
not do any throwing, hit the weight room. Then he plays basketball, and that's when he'll start long toss and getting into his pens. Okay, so so that kid won't do any f- f- pitching, throwing for fall ball, right? Yes. <clears throat> yep. Okay. And so, and then so that'll give you the two months, and then he'll start his on ramp, I guess, in November, around let's yes. say November, to then yeah, start. And, and I always, uh, with today's world, I always say like, are you going to any camps? Mm-hmm. Are you going to any showcases? Yeah. Because you also have to get ready for those events if that's what you're going to do. So, like I remember the kid that went to Coastal, his his big year was that junior year. Right. So. And back then it was the junior year. I wish we could get back to that somehow, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. Yeah. That, we'll probably start recruiting sixth graders here soon. Dude, I was – so the PG World Series, <laughs> I was just in Orlando. I was just in Orlando with the 14U national team. Carter Christensen, he goes to Moeller. He came. And uh, A&M, TCU, Tennessee, 14U kids. You know, you're talking kids that are going to be freshmen. We had two – there was two already committed. South Carolina, Tennessee already had eighth-grade commits. Yeah, they're there, and they were there. They're there, and it's like everybody knew A and M was there. Like, I mean, they were they were there. I mean, they were to Mississippi yeah. State. So Mississippi State, Fox Hill was there. Like, uh, I mean, it's it's wild, man. It's I was like, it, it was an incredible event, incredible. Um, yeah. I think what also helped too the the sixteen U started like right, like kind of they kind of melded together in the last two three days. And uh, so, but yeah, incredible. I'm with you though, man. It's, it's pretty wild, you know, cause talk about the pressure kids that get nowadays, man. It's a lot different. Oh yeah. And, and that's my thought. Like some of these kids that I see on all those events that are freshmen that are hitting 90, you know, like 91, 92. And I'm almost like, I'm starting to get nervous for that kid because at some point, is he just going too fast too early and something bad's going to happen for this kid? And like, like the kid that I'll, I'll just say, like the kid that played for the angels, the kid that played for the Phillies, they came to us throwing about 80, 81 as freshmen mm-hmm. and sophomore year, they're 84 junior year, they're 87, 88. And then senior year, they're 91, 92. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, at some point, you know, what's this, what's this kid's max going to be? Is it, is it 105 by the time he's a senior? Like, yeah, where know. are they going to go? Uh, that, my question is like, what else, where else are you going here? Like how, I mean, are we throwing 105 here? Like, I mean, like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> is that where we're going? We had like the, the Carhoff boy from Ohio. Like that kid's, I think 88, like 80. I'm like, this kid's getting ready for your freshman, you know, like yeah. it's amazing. It gets amazing. That Carhoff boy, like he needs a big kid. I know. Yeah. And, uh, my, man, like, yeah, you wonder like, where, where, where is it? And hopefully the, you know, I guess that's maybe how the body's changing and, and, but it is. No. And that's what I mean. Like, I think we are doing a better job of taking care of those arms and doing things that are the right for that kid. So yeah, hopefully everybody does stay healthy, but it would just make me leery that this kid continually his body growing is already throwing 90. Like it's wild. It is. It is definitely, definitely continue to change. And yeah, and definitely love how you said like, so will you guys have um, like a structured weightlifting program? Yes. And um, I actually was talking about that on Twitter last night is um, we as coaches at our high school are the strength and conditioning coaches as well. And I'm like, I don't know how long it's going to take till you know, schools and athletic departments are like, you're not certified as a lifting instructor. Like, and we have a hundred kids coming to us, maybe in preseason workouts. I mean, probably not every day coming to workouts, but we probably have 75. So I'm training 75 guys on a lifting routine and trying to be as individually based as we can with those guys. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any specific training in that other than what I get from other coaches and strength and conditioning coaches. Like I have a first cousin, he's the strength and conditioning coordinator at Wake Forest. We have a guy in Grove City now that he was the strength and conditioning coach at Kansas State. Um, we get things from all of our college guys 
we have a ton of college guys, luckily, that do play baseball um, after high school. And those guys are always bringing back great ideas and great things. And we even let them run things sometimes for our guys of things that they've done at college. So, but at the end of the day, like I, I'm not a certified trainer, right? You know, and I don't, I don't know. What does your school do on that end? Um, so no, you have a, we have a, a, a strength coach, uh, who would be in charge of the whole school. It's part of their like a, a period, yeah. a period in the day. Um, you know, and sometimes that guy, and that guy could honestly, like you could just take a test, like the praxis basically of strength and conditioning and become a strength and conditioning coach. Um, but yeah, it, the, the coaching, the coaches, um, that's really kind of on them if they want any kind of specific program, like maybe they're doing like, so yeah. for us, <clears throat> I would have done stuff in the, in the winter. We'd have 6 a.m. list before school. And that was just my program based off what we wanted to do. Um, even yeah. for the whole, even for the whole, like getting the team together, you know, that, that getting up at 6 a.m. That's just different, you know, like for, especially yeah. for a high school kid, even 15 year old freshman. Um, and so we would do that, but that was all on me. Yeah. And the, and the research and the things that I wanted to do, based on a baseball movements, you know, more med ball stuff. Yes. We started to do towards the end. We started a lot more med ball stuff, a lot more med ball work, good movement stuff. Um, and just arm care. Like, honestly, for us, even for, for me, like one of the biggest goals was we're just going to build our arm care routines during the winter. Like if that's, if that's one thing that we get out of weightlifting, like that's huge. Cause then when we get to spring, it's arm care time because especially we're ramped you know, up. Yeah. We're ready to roll. So then the routines are done. Cause you know, as a high school coach and especially me, we're starting at four o'clock for practice. Life happens. And I'm the only one there. If I tell you to go do arm care, like they already know what to do. Like it's already just, it's already part of yep. the routine. So that was always huge. Like that's what I really liked about weightlifting is that we incorporated that into it as well. Even pre and post too, we started to activate, uh, activate at the beginning and then do some recovery at the end. So guys just got in that mindset um, was recovery uh, Cause I yeah. think we do, a, I think we do, a, I think people have done a great job of what you do before you throw, but even, even now, like looking at kids, like, and I got kids from the mid Atlantic area and from all different kind of programs. And they look at recovery, like, Hey, after the game, like you're going to meet me over here, we're going to get this stuff done so you can get your arm ready uh, and to recover. And they're like, what? <laughs> and so I think recovery is, is a, has been a huge, huge part for me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all we would do for weightlifting. Um, it would just kind of be on. Do you do like your the weighted ball reverse throws and Rever all for of activation? Your posts? Yeah, for for some of the activation, I love the reverse throws. Uh, revert like typically the only recovery stuff that we'll like, and and it's only up to the kid. I got some kids who will like the reverse throws, but almost everybody like up tosses or you're just gonna hold it. Um, yeah, that, that's a big one. And when someone's like waiter walk, waiter walk, we would love. I love waiter walks in the gym when we did those, um, and they're just great yes. for just stabilizing. I love those. Um, but yeah, I think depending on the kids, some kids like after they throw, like they just don't really want to th No, So like, no, exactly. They might, they might just hold it. Um, guys who have like arm, like maybe some like shoulder tightness, like we're just going to hold it. Like we'll just have the whole, and like you, you'll go through your motion, you just won't throw it. Um, cause I think that's a great stretch. Uh, the rebounders are awesome. Um, but a lot of times even just me, just like literally just rolling them out. Like if I just roll them out, they'll feel much better or they'll get a lacrosse ball and just roll it out. Yeah. That alone, they, they just, they have really bought into that. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it's good for those routines because in a high school world, um, you know, low, small college budget. I mean, I just talked to a guy, Mary Bob, and it's a brand new school college in, in Virginia. He's a, he's by himself. He's by himself at a four-year school you know, and, and starting a new program, he's got a grad assistant they're trying to get on, but you know, when you're in that, like they better know their routines, they better have those things in order, you know, and that's just the reality of you doing what you love and you might be in a, in no, a tough, I in mean, a tough spot, you know? I mean, even our, even our guy at the angels, I still remember to this day, you know, him calling me as a freshman at Ole Miss. And he's like, man, he goes, I just, I don't know what they're doing for me to get my arm ready to throw on these, weekends like they think they say i'm gonna throw and then i don't throw so i'm like well then you need to be ready to throw and then if you don't throw i need to get that bullpen in to get ready for a midweek game that's it and you know it took about three weeks of him figuring out that role that freshman year of 
I'm like, you've done this your entire life. You are so mentally ready to do your own program that you don't need someone to tell you what to do. I'm like, go back to what we did. You yeah. know, and he, and he, and he did it. He's like, he's like, I'm just going to go back to what I do. And then if they tell me to do something different then that's what I'm going to do. So, you know, even at a place like Ole Miss, like you better be ready to have some of your ideals. And sometimes I'm sure a lot of those coaches just want to see what kind of worker you are, you know, or when you're not getting a chance to play, are you still going to put in that work? Yeah. So let's dive into some of that, man. Like, uh, cause I, I, I did a, I've, I think that again, well, one of my goals this summer was just as I'm helping the kids, like I said, from different programs is getting like, what do you do the day before you start or the day after? So like, how do you, what's that, what's that, what's that schedule look like for you? Like, what do you like to do maybe the day of the day after? Um, and then how do you kind of incorporate that? Like teach that to basically from your young kids. Cause I'm sure, like you said, they had a kid from Ole Miss, like he, he probably didn't get come to you like that. How do you kind of get yeah. him to that point? Um, and, and everybody's a little bit different. And I think it also depends in high school. We use so many, so many of our guys as two-way guys. Yeah. So, like, this this year, one of our aces, um, you know, our number one, number two, whatever you want to call him, he was also our shortstop. And he's going to he's gonna pitch at a Division two school in West Virginia. Um, really good right-handed pitcher. But he was also a great shortstop. So, we had to really try to figure out ways – that we were going to limit his throws because I just, I think like that, especially if you're a shortstop, like you're going to throw so many violent throws during the game on a day after you just pitched. Mm -hmm. So um, we really tried to limit him a lot of throws during practice. He'd take a lot of ground balls, throw balls and flip balls into buckets, um, that kind of thing, just to limit his action. Um, there'd be days where he wouldn't take infield. Um, and just try to limit those. Uh, so he would always, and everyone we try to have our pitchers give us an individual plan of what they like to do. So I don't want to make a plan up that is universal for every pitcher in our program. Um, do they like to start two days before their start? Do they want to start a day before they start? Um, just kind of depending on whatever they want to do that, they have to have it written down, a written down plan that they want to stick to. And whenever they don't stick to that plan, we can go back and say, hey, you know, your plan says you do this on the day before. You know, if we don't think they're, you know, being accountable to those uh, plans that we set. Um, our pitching coach now, he is the he's the dad of the kid that plays for the Angels. So he's been around our program for 15 years. Uh, amazing guy in our community and really helped push our turf project that we got our our uh our whole infield turf nice uh, new dugouts new new backdrop it looks beautiful um but he's a big believer in like we used to always lift the day after you threw and really pound the legs and get a good squat in and he's like that day after i want those guys to rest as much as possible and let them get their legs back and then the day after that now that's the day we'll try to hit that lift mm. so um you know, it's kind of kind of different philosophy than what we did for for eight years. Um, but you know, I kind of want got guys to have ownership in our program, and he's our pitching guy, and I want him to have that ownership of what do you want those guys to do, and that's kind of his uh, stance on it. Awesome. So my only question there would be. At what age are they allowed to just give you a program like that? You know, are you assuming that as a freshman, you know, like you're going to like letting them sit for himself, or is there a teaching saying, hey, here's the structure, and then do you get to maybe your junior year, and that's when you can they can yeah. kind of well create their own. one of our one of our starters and aces was a freshman this year, okay. so he definitely had he was he plays for the Cincinnati Flames. You know, yep. he's the one that just pitched in that WWBA. Yep. Did amazing down there. He is, he's had a plan since I've met that kid as a sixth grader. Okay. He's just very bought in, um, very cerebral and how he goes about his work. Um, so I don't know if it's always like an age or if it's what do they know and what do they have a background in okay. for our young guys, for our young guys, a lot of times if they're on our, you know, 
JVA, JVB team, it's our coaches giving them that plan and saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. Did that feel good? If not, you know, maybe they go and tweak that a little bit. But mm-hmm. I would say that for on our end, um, our varsity pitching coach, he gives those guys a lot of leeway on what they can and can't do, but they definitely have a, a stringent plan that they stick to every week. Yeah, that was just, uh, he said, that was just my regular question. That was, and that's a great answer. I mean, that's just, it's authentic. It's real, you know, and that's real coaching. You know, you're doing what's right for the kid, um, you know, because I could say, like, that's just somewhere where I was just so, and I'm not sure where you are. Was it, was it like back in the day where like everybody just always did everything exactly the same? Is that oh, what, is sure. that why you're, is that why kind of you kind of yeah. made this change? Yeah. Um, I mean, even with the throwing programs, like I remember, you know, as a high school kid, everybody was on that line and we were like doing the throwing progression that we did 20 years ago to a whistle. Like it was like football practice. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of, we kind of really want to let every kid be so individual and let so, so many kids work on whatever they do. Like I want our outfielders thrown with outfielders. I want our infielders thrown with infielders. Um, and they kind of have their own routines and thrown from different arm angles. And I'm like, if you're a pitcher, you know, I want to throw, I want to throw some curve balls. I want to throw some change ups from 80, 90 feet and feel that arm slot and feel, feel that, that throw when we come in from our long, from our long throws. Um, so I kind of, you know, want that to be a lot more individualistic than, than I was ever coached to do, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, given those kids the ability to say, Hey, this feels good with my arm today, or my arm doesn't feel good today at all. So I'm going to kind of take it a little more easy today. Um, we'll get an off day. I don't really want to ramp it up unless I have to. So, um, we kind of give our players a lot more individual. Um, they can have the detail in their throwing program on those days. Mm-hmm. And it seems like uh, how to, um, you must have a lot of uh, talks with your players. Like it just, you know, you must be able to communicate a good bit to say one, you know, how's this working for you? Um, because in order to even have that, because for me, I'm just thinking about, you know, when am I going to have that conversation with like infielders and infielders and outfielders and outfielders, and then to say, okay, well, what are you doing? What does your throwing program look like? You know, how are you getting yourself prepared? You know, do you, are those conversations, are you, are you like out there in the, like out there during warm up time, just kind of talking to everybody? Or is that something that you do maybe after practice, before practice, just kind of find time? Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's just a nonstop communication piece with all of our guys. And so many of our guys are, are Grove city kids forever. So they've been at our camps and they've done our progression throwing since they were third graders. Yeah. Um, so that throwing piece, they're always kind of building different things and maybe they pick up something with the summer team that they play on or um, one of our college guys are throwing with and they do something. So it's always, my thought is I'm always trying to pick up something and if it works for you, then use it. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I, I've circled back to the Mike Myers kid the pitches for the Angels. I tell all of our guys a hundred times, he was a guy that would listen and try anything that anyone told him. So if if Trey Cobb came over to Grove City one day, you know, with his high school hat on and said, Mike, I was watching you throw your bullpen. If you, I think if you threw your change up this way, I think it'd work a little bit better. He would try it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd tell all of our guys like, you know, like with pitching and throwing and and even infield work, like a lot of our college guys will come home and teach maybe a little bit something different. Try it, see if it feels good. And I think baseball is such a feel-good sport. You know, if if I tell you to do something in the cage hitting-wise and it doesn't feel good, we can't do it. You know, like – and maybe that may be we have to take another two, 300 reps on a tee – slow it down, get a little more mechanical until it does feel good. 
But at some point, if it doesn't feel good, when you get on the mound or you get it in the box and your mindset isn't wrapped around, I'm confident, I feel good with this new approach. Like, I just feel like in baseball, you're going to struggle. Mm-hmm. And we want all of our guys to, to think they're absolutely nasty. And we say nasty and dirt bags a lot. And uh, just try to have that mindset that, you know, we want to play up here and, and we are tough, tough minded kids. Um, so, you know, I want them to have that uh, responsibility, accountability to, own whatever they do mm. own it yeah i could definitely see like you know you're with all your individualizing and things like that you're doing like the ownership is becoming is definitely something that comes comes to mind when i'm thinking about your program and what you're doing you know and just for them p- creating the kind of pitching plan they want to do um it's not compliance you know like i think back in the day like you said when we were everybody's on the line we're doing with whistle it was compliance not necessarily yeah. ownership you know and i think that's a big difference um and i think with even even the way that you've talked about like with the summer ball of how it's heading and a lot of these kids are straight weekend guys only so and and a lot of these kids are from all over towns or all over states or you know you know we had a kid that was in georgia for two weeks in a row like you better have a structured plan of what you do 100 and go about your business if you're going to take care of your arm um, and you can't rely on somebody to say, make sure that that guy is going to run it the same way that we do. And so that's why I kind of just want everybody to have their own program in case they come to a team that isn't as structured. And uh, when they get to college and there's that one GA that's kind of running that whole fall piece or something like, do you know what to go back to and um, hold yourself accountable to having a plan and being specific to that plan. Mm-hmm. Well, even like you said, even with the old Miss, like, you know, that guy had to kind of go back to where you yeah. created the ownership from, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And, and that's what I told him. I said, come on, man, you got 17 assistants and GAs and people all over. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. We would be dying for that. Imagine the kind of practice we'd run. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me five guys. Oh man. Absolutely. Oh man. That's good. That's good. Um, so you talk about being like a dirt bag too. Like I, I Rhett speaks a lot to me there, uh, being a dirt bag and being like nasty. I know those are big words in your program. Like how I, I always love to hear, cause I, I want to try to find a way to do it better is, is how have you created that? Like, how have you created an, a, a, that dirt bag kind of mentality? Are you, is something that happens during weightlifting? Is it stuff that you do during, do you have classroom sessions? Like, are you, do you chart? Like I know some people have like a dirt bag chart. Um, like what do you do to and kind of instill that in your program? Um, we've, we've done all of those things and we okay. always are, and we always are tinkering with it to make it better. Um, and we've even started a chart that, uh, we got from a coach down in Oxford, Alabama, and, and they just live by a code of, um, they live by a code of, I'm going to do everything in baseball the right way. So, uh, we make our guys get off the field in eight seconds. So you'll see guys all fall and freshmen, they come in and they're like, wait, what are we doing? Like, and our old guys are jumping them for it. And, and just, it's just a nonstop teaching of the way that we want to play the game. Mm-hmm. Um, if we think that guys have a chance to dive and don't dive, you know, we're going to let them know about it. Um, we're going to make sure our captains hold those guys accountable. Um we do things in the weight room nonstop to try to, and we, and we talk about the dirt bag mentality, you know, like those events that we'll throw up at the end of weightlifting, those will be dirt bag awards for the day. You know, they might get a t-shirt that day. Um, And there's, and there's always ways that in the weight room, we want to continue to um, emphasize some of those things. But also, you know, we make sure we talk about it all the time. Uh, We have classroom sessions about it. Our guys present about it. Our old guys are able to talk about some of the old dirt bags that they know of um, and what that meant to them as younger players. So um, it's just – it's a part of our culture that everybody in Grove City has been a 
a part of. Um, and it's something that our, our guys even come back from college and they talk about all the time. Um, for years, we used to do, we, we always had two dirt bag shirts and they were uh, bright green. So every single day of practice, um, there'd be a dirt bag offensively, defensively. And those guys would get the bright green shirt to wear at practice the next day. If you're a dirt bag for a game, the next day at practice or the next game, you showed up and wore the bright green shirts. Um, I'd wash them every Sunday. So we had to kind of throw that out with uh, COVID. Right. Um, so that's been on a two year hiatus. So we're looking to bring our dirt bag shirts back this year. Nice. And uh, hopefully we can get back after that. So you said like, so you gave it an offensive and defensive dirt bag. Yeah. So a guy that, shirt. you know, we, we thought may, and maybe it was performed well, or maybe he made three diving catches in the infield and, you know, our guys were rallying around that. So like, or maybe it's just a guy that absolutely got it done in the dugout, brought energy, brought juice for everybody that didn't even get to play. Right. So, you know, sometimes those guys have been awarded dirt bags. So, you know, I think it's, it's very important to always think about those guys as well. Um, some of those kids that, you know, had 10, 15 at bats in a season are some of the ones that still come around our program the most um, because they understand, you know, the values that we were trying to preach. And, you know, it's the same values that are carrying them through college or into their workplace um, to this day. You know, we have we had a kid that he talks about it all the time to me when he sees me. Um, he is in his second year of med school. Um, to be a doctor. So he, he's finished or not second year of med school. He's in his second year of rotations now. So he's finished med school. And uh, he talks about it all the time. He goes, sometimes when I'm having a bad day, he goes, I just got to remember to be a dirt bag. Mm. So, you know, that was a kid that he was an all state kid, you know, four year starter for me could have went a lot of places and played baseball, but he knew he wanted to be a doctor. He's like, I'm going to go to high state. Then he went to Penn state med school. Now he's at the uh, University of Utah in his second year of rotations um, to be a doctor. So, um, you know, those things resonate with our program a lot on the kind of the culture and the mindset we're trying to build. You know, it's not just for baseball. It's for these kids for life. That's why we're here. Absolutely, man. I love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was a great story. I love that. And so yeah. I guess so. Do oh, you, we like, brought do you him back. Do, that was like, I was just thinking honestly, like the, like the shirt, what's it look like? Is it like a, like just say like dirt bag on it? Like, that'd yeah, be like it's, is it's, it... a, it's a big GC with dirt bags and it's bright green and our, our colors are Royal red and white. Okay. So when you show up with that uh, neon, neon green dirt bag shirt on, somebody knows you were doing something right. That going right. That going right. That's awesome. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it, is it only coaches given or does like the dirt bag give it to another dirt bag the next day, the next time? No, I mean, it, for us, it's always been coaches that give it. But, okay, I mean, a lot of times we'll be like, hey, dirt bag. And some of those dudes will start yelling, you know, like it was Trey Cobb today, you know, like it was Trey, you know, and immediately <laughs> like, hey, even if I had somebody in my mind, like we might have to flip it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's cool. It's just great, man. Like, you know, and, and how long have you how long have you guys been doing that? Uh, we probably started that 11 and 12 were kind of the years that we started it. Dang. And it kind of all started with, with a guy that was about as, as tall as Trey Cobb. Yeah. Um, he was, he was our shortstop and this kid was about five, seven, one forty five. Um, an absolute dirt bag is where it kind of started with him. And this dude would just dive in the hole dive over his head, catch balls, dive into first if he had to. Like, it was whatever it took to win a game. He wasn't the fastest guy. Um, he played hurt a lot, and his teammates knew that. Um, and that dude just absolutely, a 5'7", 140-pound guy, would get in dude's faces if he had to. Yeah. And our guys, for those two years – just completely rallied around him, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we have a guy that was, um, he coaches in our program now and 
you know, he was on that team. He was senior captain, big time player for us, uh, was an all American at Otterbein university. He got drafted by the Phillies, um, out of Otterbein. And he says to this day, he goes, we never would have been the same without Jimmy Gravette on our team, you know, oh, man, that's cool. That, you know, he's like, I just don't know if like, and we're coaching now we're talking. He's like a couple of years ago. He's like, I just, I just don't know how to find another Jimmy Gravette, yeah. you know, cause he goes like, that's what our team needs this year. And that's what he knows, like carried his team to two final four appearances. And, you know, we lose to Moeller three, two in a, in a state final game. Mm. Um, so I'm still mad at Tim about that. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, I always tell I always tell Tim that we had two guys going to play Division three baseball that year, and he had seven guys getting ready to get drafted. <laughs> and you beat him three two. <laughs> and he beat us three two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there. I love those teams, man. I took a. That was one of the. Went to college with the Juco World Series with, well, one one at the time when it was two, uh, the next year won uh, division one scholarship and we beat Chipola with more draft picks than we had yeah. division one guys. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that's that was a fun team. But like so, yeah. Like speaking of that, coach, like uh, how to so Jimmy? Like what 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 is your answer to that? Like how do you how do you find a guy? Yeah, and I don't I don't know that there's any way to find that guy. What I will say is the culture that we try to bring and, and teach about those guys and what they meant to our program yeah. and always having those guys back around our program. And, and we're, and we're very fortunate to have about, I think we have 25 guys playing college ball right now. So come Christmas, um, come Thanksgiving, those guys are back around our program for another month and a half, two months. And just our guys able to pick their brains and lift with them and work with them. Um, it's, it's amazing for our guys. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that piece for anything. Um, and the ability for our guys to do that. Um, we nonstop talk about it, even at the, even at our baseball camps, you know, we talk about it all the time and we put dirt bags and this year it was, uh, this was the camp shirt this year was oh, turf, bags turf bags. Turf bags. Oh, okay. Fought, we finally got turf this year. So we started just, and we'll, we'll never go away from dirt bags, but uh, as a, as a new uh, little ring to it this year, we went turf bags. Yeah. But, and so the young guys were having a blast with that. Oh, I'm sure. Well, it's, I, mean, I think that's also the way of like, you know, you're adapting, you know, and you're kind of keeping it fresh too, you know? And cause yeah. I can tell you like, so we have a catcher, I, I work with a catcher this summer and just yesterday, you know, here's a kid who's a catcher. He, he caught seven out of nine games in five days, uh, came in and, and then uh, caught another game. Like oh, it would have been on this like seventh, sixth day, seventh day. And then um, guy ended up getting hurt and he had to come back, come in late this game two and caught the last two, like just uh, absolutely. And then he's out on second base and he, now his uniform's like black because of yeah. the turf you know what i mean so like you still have that feeling and it's soaking wet because he's just he's a you know he's a sweater but like you know catcher just absolute turf bag because now it's black <laughs> it's not like brown yeah. these uniforms are it's now got the black. black stains all over them it's got yeah. the black stains all over so like i i think there still is that now like because i mean it's it's crazy that a lot of our kids sometimes they play on turf more than anything and so i, I think yeah. i think that resonates with them i, I think there's still a a, a, a visual there of that um but yeah like that's what it was like i was like man like it's it that's he's he's a turf bag like he's a he's a down and dirty like uh guys that you can just just talking to college coaches that were working the team cam like they you know they all love that you know like that's that's exactly the model that like this guy just gets after it man and and uh yeah now they're just black <laughs> and like they're coming in they're dumping and they got all those black pebbles in their shoes <laughs> the turf balls you know, release like, those before you leave yeah yep. <laughs> so you know just just stuff like that just it's funny how the game is that's just that's part of it that's it's, it's another change you're right like it is. you know i'm such a guy that loves grass and dirt and um love taking care of the field for all you know the the past 17 years um and just getting that turf though 
I mean, it was an absolute game changer for our guys, um, even just from a mental standpoint of them just showing up and like in two minutes we're working. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it has been crazy. Um, I bet we picked up 30 practice days or workouts. Um, you know, hey, we're going to go to the field, take ground balls for 15, 20 minutes, and it's uh, five degrees outside. Mm. You know, and our guys are like, oh, let's go. Yeah. You know, like they're like, it's not that cold for 10 minutes, you right. know, and, and just being able to go out there, get some hands work, do whatever. Um, it's been awesome to see our kids uh, kind of relish in that in that environment. And just in, I guess, you know, in, in Ohio, are you guys able to like just uh, shovel it off too? like you able to shovel oh, off the roll? Yeah. Yeah. That was the thing. Uh, we were like, hey, how do you get this snow off? Yeah. So we honestly didn't want to put a plow on it right, or anything right, right. in, in the first year before we even got to use it <laughs> and like mess this thing up. So right. what we did, it was the week of tryouts and we still had snow in our field, but I was like, we got to figure a way to get this snow off. Like it's starting to melt, but we had like a snow right before tryouts of like, I don't even know. It was like eight to 12 inches. Like it was crazy. Dang. So during tryouts at the end of Monday night and Tuesday night, we had our guys go out and for the conditioner at the end of tryouts run through that eight to 12 inches and just keep beating that snow down and beating it down. <laughs> and by Thursday, we were literally hitting ground balls for the last two days of tryouts on the turf. Oh, wow. So it was kind of wild. Like I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but, uh, Regardless, let's go get some conditioning where these guys have to trudge through this snow. So it'd be pitch black outside. It was complete darkness. And I was like, hey, we're going to jog the baselines, you know, and these guys are all just sprinting everywhere. And it, I mean, it was kind of kind of just fun for them to get out and do that mm -hmm. and kind of get away from that. Uh, uh, you know, like sometimes tryouts are like very slow and methodical and or, you know, so much pressure for some of those kids that are on the bubble yeah. and just to be able to get outside and do something fun like that. I think it released a lot of tension for a lot of those kids. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Is that something you still do again? Like, are you, are, is it, have you, have you learned anything new about the turf? Is that something you would do again? Like, are, are you able to, are you able to plow it? Are you able to shovel it? Like, would you do that now or anything? Yeah. Some guys told me that you can put down this plastic guard. Um, after that snow, we didn't, we don't, we truly don't really get a ton of snow after February oh, okay. um, in Ohio. So it's not, it's not horrendous. Usually March is when it starts to get really rainy and stuff. So that's, that's an issue. So just picking up those rain, the cold rain day practices, and we're able to now go to, get on the turf and use it. So, um, you know, it's been a game changer for us. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of times, the machines might not quite work right when it's a little bit wet and rainy and all that stuff or the balls get heavy. Um, but we've invested in a lot of all weather balls. So on those days where it's pouring down rain and we're not going to get out the pearls and ruin them, go to the monster bucket of all weather balls. And that's what we're going to use today. So mm -hmm. the guys all know that um, that's what we're using today. And don't cry about it when you pop out the second today. That's it. That's it. Oh, cool. Very cool. Uh, tryouts, man. I tell you, I, it got me thinking about tryouts like, and how you do run tryouts. Um, I haven't really ever – it's never really kind of came up, honestly. Like, would you want to dive in this a little bit about how you run tryouts? Like, I know, like, for me, yeah. it was <clears> – <throat> I got to a point where I want I, – I always love the idea, and I think I got this from one pitch warrior. I, I think it was from him back in the day, Justin Deemer. I think that's what his name. Yeah, and so I Justin, remember listening to all his speeches. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I remember, he was like huge for a couple yeah. of years, and so it was. I was just the idea of being a track coach. You know, like being a track coach is like everybody. Like, you know, it's just like you can't argue with the guy. You know, like it's yeah. So I got that idea of like trying to make everything objective. You know, and running tryouts. <laughs> almost like little competitions, you know, like all the time, but like, and it would be a range like, okay, if I scored this many, it will be three points. If I scored this many, two points. And if I'm in the like bottom rating third, system. yeah, basically. And that's kind of how we ran trials. So like, I was wondering, cause like I said earlier to you, like I didn't make, you know, being a small one, a school in Maryland, 
we weren't making uh, varsity cuts. You know, we had some uh, JV ones, but so like being at a school like yours, like how do you run a successful tryout? Like what's the best ways that you, know, that you were able to do that? Yeah, our, we, um, our school is about, it's, we're a division one school in Ohio, so that's the, the biggest. And we have about 2,000 kids in our school. Yeah. So we usually get anywhere from, I think we had 75 tryout this year to we've had as many as 88 tryout. Mm. So we have a lot of guys try out every single year. We have three teams. <clears throat> and um, our thing is we give our guys a full week to try out. And I know some people are like, hey, man, after three, day three, I got to get practicing. So um, we try to give everybody two days to show us what they can do on the bump if they're a pitcher. So if you throw on Monday, you might get to throw on Thursday. Um, and we just throw like, those are short pens. Like that first week is just 15 pitches. So it's like 15, come back, throw 10 on the next day. Show us what you got. Show us on the gun, show us your curveball. show us your change up, whatever, whatever you think, um, is going to sell you. Um, and then as far as that goes, then we have like a, a monster rating scale spreadsheet that we run all week. Mm -hmm. um, so we're putting all those competitions like you talked about in, um, whether it's infield velo, exit velo. Um, we got a bat speed thing that we do. Um, and then we just, we rate, we have like a rating scale on ground balls, fly balls, arm strength. We'll do a catcher pops. We do infield pops. We do outfield pops, um, all from, you know, designated feet. Um, so kind of just like you said, like try to create all those little competitions um, that some guys are going to stand out in some regard. And then, you know, some guys are going to really struggle and, you know, it's going to stick out like this is definitely your weakness area. And then, I think, you know, being able to do that and have those competitions like that for that whole week um, also is able to lead into some great conversations because we talk to every single kid. <clears throat> if you make it, don't make it on Friday um, at the end of cut week uh, of one, this is why we're cutting you. These are things you need to work on. If you fix those things, you know, come back in June, meet us in the weight room. Um, we'd love to see you back. You know, we do all of our summer workouts, um, get back, you know, get on a summer team, make sure you play as much as you can work on those weaknesses that we talked about. And then you got a chance to make that team. Um, the kids that do make it, we also try to have those conversations of if we had a game tomorrow, this is where we see you. And this is just a, a nonstop communication line that we try to have throughout the year and you know that changes all the time like there was a kid that played for us this year that we didn't have any intentions of maybe playing but he got hot on jv started doing really well um we started struggling at some pieces defensively for us and he kind of was a fit that we thought we needed and he was just an absolute energy giver the second we put him back into our lineup mm. so you know that it's not always going to stay true. Um, but I remember giving that kid a speech, like you're going to start out at JV. Um, I want to see you compete at that level. You're going to be a leader on that team. And then if, if all goes well, you know, hopefully you're back up with us. Yeah. Um, so that, that's how his speech went. Um, another kid's speech may have went, you know, tomorrow we see you as a starter, starter in left field, um, hitting in the four hole. But if, if you don't progress through the next three weeks of practice and three weeks of, or two or a week of um, scrimmage games, and then into our early week games, you know, those, you know, our guys know that those roles are not sticking. Um, and you have to perform every single day at practice games if you want to keep those spots. So um, I think it's just a nonstop communication line on. What do we need to do better? Um, where are you right now? And um, just nonstop trying to get better, nonstop trying to, you know, be a great teammate. That's another piece we're always 
always looking at is how great of a teammate can you be? Because, you know, we talk about it all the time. Like, you know, I, I haven't played high school ball for over 20 years, mm-hmm. but I still remember all the great teammates. You know, if you were a dude that what didn't get it and didn't want to be a great teammate to this day, we still may not talk to you. Right. You know, but I, you know, I never forget those great teammates. If you played, didn't play, didn't matter. Um, you know, just kind of, you want to want to be that guy at the end of the day in Grove city, there's this massive alumni softball tournament. So our guys, I mean, they get geeked up about it. I mean, and, and it's so cool. And I wish my high school had it to this day, but it's every single class has their own team. So it was what, two weeks ago, last week, last week and the last week of July every year. Um, it's all, it's called alumni weekend. You come back and play in this massive softball tournament with your class. Mm. Um, so, and our guys, I mean, they, they practice softball all year once they graduate high school, just to be ready to not uh, let their class down. <laughs> but it, it's a way to get back for, you know, alumni and just see everybody. And, you know, I think it's another reason this community is so close is for events like that. Like, they're nonstop. They love Grove City. They want to be a part of it. You know, 10 years down the line, and they live in Florida. These guys fly back to play in this softball tournament every year. Um, and it's a big deal for them. So, you know, just that, you know, that thing. And I always talk about, I'm like, hey, regardless, you want to be a great teammate because you want the whoever the captain of your softball team is to say, yeah, we still want him to play on our team. <laughs> I go, it. what you – you don't want to get left out because you were a jerk in the dugout. That's right. Now, is that a baseball, is that a baseball fundraiser or just a school fundraiser? No, it, the softball tournament. Yeah. It's just literally a, it's a an alumni tournament that this guy started. I don't even know 30 years ago. Okay. And he kind of just ran it as a separate tournament. So it's not really school affiliated. Oh, okay. So maybe for alumni foundation where they can, it's almost like a booster club, basically. Yes. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Like a, like an athletic booster. Oh, cool. That, that's a great idea. Yeah. What a great yeah. culture, man. Yeah. You definitely have a, and it's, and it's, and it's, and I find it, it, it's, I think it's really special about you guys. Cause like you guys are huge and to have, that's almost like a, a very tight knit, smaller community when as, as big as a school. Oh yeah. Are. That's and pretty that's, cool. That's what I'll say about this city is, um, you know, I grew up over on the river of Mar- uh, Martins Ferry, Ohio, right on Wheeling, West Virginia, yeah. 45 minutes from Pittsburgh. So it's a lot of smaller towns. So oh, that yeah. small town, ta- that small town feel um, is very similar up in this monster suburb of Columbus. You know, we're 10 minutes from downtown Columbus um, and still have that small town feel is pretty amazing because there's, there's a lot of schools up here that are great at sports. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're so close to the big city that they just do not get the community support Mm -hmm. um, in their towns because you live in Columbus. There's the Buckeyes, the Blue Jackets, the Clippers, you know, like there's a lot of pro teams, college teams. And I mean, the Buckeyes alone is enough for a lot of people to follow for life. So Um, you know, our football Friday nights are always packed. Our fans travel, um, at our baseball games, it gets rowdy on on a baseball Friday night game, um, home game with Gahanna or New Albany. Um, our fans are always there to support us. Yeah, that's super cool, man. Speaking of that community, like, so how, how do you guys as a baseball program then kind of, I don't want to say buy into like, but like what, how kind of things you create more of that community feel and give back to the community. Um, yeah, like they're, they're just in that alumni event, our yeah. guys woke up, we would wake up at 7 a.m. Um, every single morning and we would clean this entire set of fields for, uh, for an organization okay. that kind of runs those fields. So it was just another way for us to kind of give back and do a little uh, community service project with our guys. Um, because I, I do know how important it is to those guys with the alumni thing. And, um, 
if our guys are able to help out in that regard at all, you know, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <clears throat> oh man, that was super cool. It is. I, mean, I was just, it's, and you it's know, so it's, it's, soft, it's softball tournaments. You know, there's going to be a lot of cleanup. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Coming out of those tents. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. That's a, that's a big time, big time fundraiser for you guys. Super cool. How many, uh, Dude, how big is that? Like, they have like tons of fields and all. Oh, they have people. They have one set of fields that's probably four hubs that just do the they call it um, men's A league, which is okay. still like the the team that won it this year was two thousand and seven. Two thousand fours won it a lot, so those teams are still playing with the younger kids, um, and then probably like anyone else 99 and older now play in the uh, they call it the legends division so they play the different set of fields wow and then there's a girls division and they play at another set of fields so it's all over the city all weekend long yeah crazy logistics well that's cool man that's really really cool like i said it just it just it was so surprising that it would be like and it's just a great alumni support there that's awesome that's a great it's really nice and to be part another, of that. Another another uh, big fundraiser that we kind of try to get out of the into the community with is our big fundraiser that we do every year is our mulch sale. Okay. So, and you, you know, guys do that during the season. Sub- yeah, we do it during the season because okay. you know everybody wants their mulch right around Easter. Yep. So we plan on doing it every single Easter weekend is our plan. So um, our conference. We, they never make us play games on Good Friday. So Good Friday, and then I call it Great Saturday. Um, those are – we are delivering mulch from 8 a.m. till about 8 p.m. both of those days. And for about, I don't know, five out of seven years, that Monday game has been a loss about 75% of the time <laughs> because our guys are not fully recovered until Wednesday's game. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's always the joke of on Monday. Hey, how mentally tough can you be when I know you're a little bit tired, and a little bit sore? Can we uh, fight through this and get this W today? Right. But it's such a, it's such a big fundraiser for us, and it does so much for our program. Um, we probably we deliver anywhere from eighteen to twenty two thousand bags of mulch mm. um, over that weekend. You know, and it's freshmen through seniors that deliver it. And it's bought us machines. It's taken us to Florida. It's taken us to Alabama. You know, we always take a big spring trip with our varsity guys. um, And it covers, you know, almost half of that trip. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the kids that get to go, they have to cover the other kind of the other half of the trip. So um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a big one for us, but it also gets us out of the community. You know, in the in the uh, residents see our guys pulling up in a big truck and del- dropping off 40, 50 bags of mulch, um, stacking it wherever they want, knocking on the door, working on communication skills, mm-hmm. um, being respectful. You know, and we talk about, you know, like there's been groups that have messed that up occasionally and it's not fun for them um, when you mess it up in the community and, you know, we got to hear bad things about you it's not going to be good. Mm -mm. Um, So, you know, just making sure that they all um, hold their end of the deal and hold their end of the uh, rope uh, for the whole team and for everybody that's associated with our program. You know, we kind of hold that into high regard. Sure. Yeah. Just those good skills, man, that, uh, you know, good program. They're teaching a lot more than just baseball. That's for sure. So speaking of that, man, it sounds like accountability. So like you talked about, you know, individualizing how things have changed, you know, how has that accountability piece changed throughout the years? You know, what's, what's maybe something that's kind of held true What's something that you kind of changed, how you're holding kids accountable, you know, when they, when, you know, when they do mess up because kids are kids and you know, how do we, how do you, how do you, how do you teach those learning opportunities when you got to hold a kid? I know it it is different for sure. And some of our, uh, some of our early teams, they always come back. And if we lose, they're like, coach, you have totally changed. You are so <laughs> soft now. 
<laughs> because they're like back what we used to lose. We'd have to run three miles that night. <laughs> right. So, and their stories, you know, like as the years go on, their stories embellish and embellish and everyone's just played for a crazy coach. And I'm not going to lie. I was probably pretty crazy when I was, uh, you know, 28, 29, when I got the head job, um, yeah. probably borderline shouldn't have done some things that I did, but those are good stories to this day. Um, and I do think it is a different time, you know, like, and I do think that I also am not a, such a believer in, you know, the, the pitchers, you know, I remember, you know, every pitch and I wasn't a pitcher in college, but all of our pitchers in college, our pitchers in high school, when they finished, you know, I felt like they went and ran three miles. So when I became a coach and those guys got done pitching, I'm like, oh, maybe they should run three miles, you know, and, and our pitchers kept getting skinnier and skinnier by the end of the year. <laughs> and I'm always, I'm trying to keep these guys bigger and thicker. And, and I'm like, man, maybe we have to change that, you know, and yep. let's just do sprints after the game or sprints the next day. So I do think that that piece has changed um, on how we hold kids accountable. Um, I, you know, I also think that, you know, just that, that piece of, everything is going to be under so much scrutiny now. You know, I think as coaches, we also have to protect ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably said some things and did some things that were borderline crazy uh, 10 years ago that I probably wouldn't think about doing in 2022. Um, but that's just kind of how everybody continues to evolve. And, you know, but I think you're right. Like I never want to lose that piece of, we want to be dirt bags and we want to play the game the right way. And we want to play fast and we want to be a little bit crazy. And some people will be like, man, you know, some of those old school guys will be like, man, I think your dugouts kind of Bush league sometimes. And yeah. you know, they're, they're too hyped and they're too pumped up, you know, and I, I always go back to, you know, playing in college and those dugouts were so crazy in college and, and watching the, college world series and seeing those guys get crazy in there. Like uh, that's what I love about the game. Um, and I don't really ever want to take that away. I mean, I really do try to prevent our guys from talking trash to the other team and, and you know, screaming at a pitcher and stuff like that. Like that stuff drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do try to give that the quick hook, uh, but I want our guys to have fun in the dugout. You know, there's, there's seven, eight guys in our dugout that don't play a lot. You know, like if they're not allowed to have fun and not allowed to root their team on and, and be a little crazy, I don't know if they want to show up and do every day thing they can at practice and compete at practice if they're not getting to do that in the dugout and have a good time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we kind of, you know, we kind of, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know that we push you to be that kind of guy in the dugout, but we want our guys to have fun and enjoy being there and being around each other. And, you know, when our guys leave the field, a lot of times they go eat dinner together, you know, like I want that, those moments to happen for those kids. Mm. Yeah, building the culture, man. Absolutely. Oh gosh, that's great. I mean, um, Oh man, that's good. Mm. What do you think? Like, so uh, being part of Grove City, so like, I, mean, I guess my thing is about the dugout. <clears throat> do you go as far as practicing things in the dugout? Like, part no, of what we, you do? Like, we dugout? don't, we don't do any rehearse things or okay. like the uh, ending in between run out like Vandy or yeah. we don't do any of that stuff. Okay. But, uh, um, we do just try to like our big thing is once the game starts, like we want everybody engaged on the game. Okay. You know, like we do a lot of vault stealing and stuff with our guys. So, um, you know, what are the guys in the dugout doing to help those base runners? Um, did anyone pick anything up that a pitcher's doing 
or he's tipping pitches or anything like that. So we try to get everybody engaged into the baseball game and just trying to get them to see the baseball game in that regard. You know, like there's been some guys that don't play for us that sit right next to me for 27, 30 games a season. And they're like, coach, here's what I'm seeing. You know, and I want that, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm never going to shoot down a, a kid that is wanting to learn the game. And, you know, he thinks he sees something. I'm like, well, let's chart that and see if that is the case. You know, like every time he gets two strikes, he's throwing this. So we're always charting those kind of things. And, and those kids are running those um, charts and um, just trying to be the best teammate that they can be. And I think everybody learning that everybody in that dugout has value. Oh yeah. And getting, getting everybody to understand that. Like I want that kid that, never comes out um, that hits in the three hole that has been an all American since they were seven years old. I need him to understand how important those teammates are as well. So to me, that's a big piece of making sure everybody's accountable on that end of being a great teammate, doing things the right way. Mm-hmm. And that's because really I just sure. think it, yeah, and I think that that's, that's what's going to happen in real life. You mm-hmm. know, like eventually at some point someone's going to tell you you're not good enough to play baseball. Mm-hmm. And you have to be a great teammate then. And if you've never been able to be a great teammate, you know, life's going to be tough. And no one's going to want to be around you. And, um, you know, in the business world, they're going to eat you up. Absolutely. And even just be like my wife's a, a partner, at a, a partner, at a CPA firm. And she said, she, you know, she can tell there's people who can work with the work with a team and work together, yeah. you know, like, you know, she was an athlete in college and, you know, you can just tell people who have that little, little there and, and they can be counted on reliable um, hundred percent. Those skills are so important. And I'm sure for her and that CPA world, that is uh that's tough for some of those guys. It is. It is. And, and, so, and when yeah. you know, certain people who are making decisions that aren't, can't think of other people and, and being a good teammate, even from the more, when you're making decisions, you know, and so just some things, so it's definitely, it's that there's, the, those are, those are skills that hundred percent um, can, well, like you said, people won't want to be around you, <laughs> you know, like it, it rubs yeah. the wrong way for sure. Yeah. Well, I guess just, like wrapping things up here, we've been on here a little one hour, I, but I was, I was honestly just wondering like what all kind of charts. Cause I mean, I was just, I know Tom had works for you. Coach Marker had worked for you and things like that. You know, he's a big chart guy. And you know, what are the things that, you know, cause I've ever, you know, I think just as you, you learn as a coach and I know you, you, you learn, you're constantly learning. And so like how, how many charts have you found to be like, I uh, know are successful, you know, like, man, we were charting all these and- things, but then I'm, like we're not doing anything with them. And then we were putting it like, and then like, but I, what have you seen to like that you can manage? Yeah. Like, these are the best things that, that we can kind of do. So like we do keep a, we call it these aren't an armed forces chart, which is like a pitching thing. Okay. So it's like a bunch of pluses and minuses for like lead off walks. You get O2. Okay. Um, an O2 with then a strikeout, it's like a plus five, you know, so we have a whole chart. It's called armed forces that, you know, our guys kind of want to score well on. Yeah. And, and, and for me, it's a lot of times we'll use those pitching charts in our inner squads. Yeah. And it's a way of kind of holding you accountable on this is why this guy gets to be a starter and why you're battling for that spot right now. Mm-hmm. Now, things could change, and he has a few bad outings. And, and you know, in the high school game, like a couple bad outings, like the, the season's so short anyways. That's season, right. You know, like you're not playing 162 games. Like I, I can't keep running you out there if you walk seven guys in an outing, you know, so like – we'll use those charts to kind of have those conversations. Um, And then we're always big on just a QAB chart because, you know, we don't really want to talk about averages and stuff, but we want to talk about how many flat out line drives can we hit and, um, 
just having quality at bats, like working a pitcher, if, if that's what you do. Um, I, you know, I'm not always a working pitcher kind of guy because I also want to be very aggressive, you right. know. So I was a guy in high school that I was a leadoff guy, and my high school coach was old school, and I never swung at a first pitch in my entire high school season. Mm. Um, I wasn't swinging until I got strike one, but I also didn't strike out. Like, you know, I was a guy that he knew I could put it in play and I wasn't going to strike out. So he kind of like, you're not swinging until you get strike one on you. Mm -hmm. I need you to see pitches, learn from it, go back and tell everybody else, you know, that was kind of, kind of my deal. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would never, you know, to this day, you know, the, how the game's changed. Like, I bet in the last 10 years, I bet seven or eight of my top hitters also are the highest on first pitch swing percentage. Oh, yeah. You know, like those guys that hit consistently well, the first straight one they see, or if they're, you know, some of those guys get so good, they start sitting curveball. Yep. You know, um, the first one that they see that they like, they're going. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of a different mindset that we live in now on how we teach those things. Um, but, you know, I keep those two charts, you know, we keep that hustle chart, um, on getting off the field, doing all the little things. Um, we also do one, you know, and a lot of guys ridicule us when our, our guys strike out they have to drop the bat and sprint down and touch um, the right field or left field fence all the way in the corner. And some people like, I don't even know, they think we're like ridiculing them or, or picking on our kids, you know, or some parent will think we're picking on her kid if her kid strikes out. But literally we do it as a, almost a, of a flush, you know, you know, we went away from it for two years and I can't think about how many times guys came in those two years spiking their bats, spiking their helmets, acting a fool, acting out of character. So we tell them, sprint down right field, left field, say whatever you have to, get it out of your system. And by the time you get back to the dugout, you're ready to be a great teammate. So we kind of use it as that in that regard. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, hey, you're using it as a, as almost like a, like I said, a flush. Absolutely, it's like a real, it's a release routine. Here's what everybody does, and that's easy. That's a great thing yeah. though to practice too. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can practice it. You can go in there every day, and yeah. Um, you know, with the QAB and the uh, the our QAB chart and our pitchers' arm forces chart, like if it's a road game, I always try to get that done out scored and then pass it back through the bus so everybody sees it. Yeah. You know, like we see it the next day. We try to hang it up in our dugout. So, you know, you see how you scored on a daily basis. Uh, because I do think that the more and more you do those charts, like, you know, in, in today's world, in today's everybody's charting everything, you know, there's 500 charts you could do. Yes. But it's, you know, what's going to hold the most reverence, I think, to your team in that moment. And every year it could even be different that you think your team struggles in this regard more. Maybe I'm going to focus more on just like the hustle piece, because I think we got guys that don't really respect that that much or, you know, whatever it may be. I think it it could be from an individual team standpoint. That's a good point. That's a great point. Very, very good point. What do what you, do you guys chart? Uh, I like weighted quality bats. So like I'm I'll always been on quality bats and that's kind of my, how my quality bats changed. Um, you know, an eight pitch at bat is different than a home run. Yeah. You know, simple as that, you know, it was just, I like that, you know, a triple is different than a single, uh, uh you know, it, it's, it's, it's so everything. So like what you just basically the armed forces, but so I like, and that's what I do yes. because armed forces is the same thing. You're basically valuing, a strikeout that I don't put a ball in play over the first pitch strike, you know, like those are two different things, you know, and I don't like, yes, I'm trying to win every pitch, but every pitch is a different situation. So like I took basically, cause like my, so my pitching chart is like, okay, strike one, 
first pitch strike, that's a point. You know, the if I get first two out of three strikes on you, that's two points. Like, you're done. Like, you're basically done. If I go first two out of three pitches for strikes, that's two points. Like, that's different than just getting one strike. One uh, strike. You know what I mean? And so, but then you get negative <laughs> You give up a hard hit baseball, like we're just not throwing it right down, right down Broadway. But if you get something knocked on you, that's a nine to point, um, you know. Yeah. And, and so it, it just kind of helps keep it all in balance. But I do. I, I think everything's different. You know, if I get a strikeout, yeah, it's definitely that's that's worth that's valuable. Like you made our defense better because they, they yes. did put it in play. Uh, and just same thing offensively. So like, I just like that with offensively, like, yeah, like, because I had a kid, like he always batted three or four, you know, batted three or four, blah, blah, blah. See, I got the best average in the lineup. Yeah. You get on singles. Like you're a catcher and you can only get singles and you can't get the second base, but this kid, his value is different. Like he got, you know, he can hit doubles. He can hit triple. He's hit a home runs. He's hitting in the mile. That's why you're six, seven, because he's three, four, because his value's there. It's a, it's like war basically, you know, yeah. like, but it's it's yes. it's simple that we could manage, you know, where it's like, yes, it's a quality of bat. So I have a quality of bat, but then it's also a weighted quality of bat point, you know. So like, yeah, it's still quiet. So you can still we can still see their quality of bat percentage, but then it's a little bit better where I can see, okay, here's their value, you know, like it's because I'm email I'm emailing you for that. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it to you <laughs> easily. Uh, I, I let that's just, but it's but it's exactly like your armed forces chart, you know. It's very similar to that where you're giving points based off of just things that are uh yeah just i think there's more value you know like it's yeah. they aren't they aren't all the same you know it's not always zero zero it's not just it, you know it's you have to you know sometimes you need a swing and miss you know and um you know and i got the two out of three from uh like the james like i said james madison pitching jimmy jackson he valued it a lot we had a good conversation through it i mean you know essentially you're putting guys in a two in a, in a two strike count and three strike three pitches yes it's really good. That's you know? huge. It's yeah. Huge. It's huge. Uh, and it really goes down to like, even like, so if we just put more value on it, like, all right, it's two points. You get two points if you do that. And then that's just, it all helps work through it. And then you don't, you walk somebody negative point. You want, you know, like, how are we going to say we don't walk people? Well, you're going to get minus points. You're not going to hit, you're getting dock points <laughs> if you walk somebody, you know, like, <laughs> so it's, it's just like the positive might have. And then so like, and then, and then, I like, um, so now it is like with the infield stuff is just kind of individually, like the, the, like we teach the lanes, like I teach the lanes. Yeah. And then, so like, when you know look what kind of ball you're getting, okay. Like it really helped with my 10 year old son, just knowing like he was like hard hit balls. Like that's where he was missing. He was missing the three, the, the hard hit three ball we call, and then it was glove side. And so I think just even just recognizing those kind of like a, a tendency chart, I guess you could yeah. say from an infield yep. standpoint, you know, uh, you usually do freebies, the freebie war and things like that. Uh, it just, for, for me, like I got to the point where, like you were saying, it was like coming back, coming back from trips. Yeah, we, uh, we did, we did it. freebies for one year too. Yeah. Yep. Did the freebie war. Cause that's it. I mean, it's the turnover ratio in all sports. It's it is very, very important. Um, but I think that gets covered pitching wise. If you do the armed forces chart, well, you know, like that's kind of there. Um, and then defensive, we know, okay, this kid's struggling with this. I'm almost be like, so for me, it's always, can you practice it? That's why I asked you about the dugout question. You're like, do you practice it? Cause like I would practice dugout, like, um, from a standpoint of like the foul balls, like we would say certain things of close play, you should be saying safe, you know, like, um, just stuff like that, that we would want to just kind of reinforce. Like if I was in a group of five or six, well, you know, some of that's going to be in the dugout working on your dugout participation, yes. you know, where, you know, tag, uh, for balls out, uh, you know, out of play, um, for defensive stuff. Um, we would just try to do every kind of dugout participation you could, but anyways, yep. so it, for me, it came back to, can you practice it with the chart? Um, and so like defensively, like freebies, it just wasn't enough where like, Oh, we're struggling with this. Um, it just didn't, couldn't come back. So like, now it's like, I, I got this chart from like, Tim Deshaun and, you know, Gillum, you know, all these guys are infield guys right now. Um, and where you, Hey, I loved, I loved your infield stuff 10 years ago. So, Oh, thanks man. Yeah. <laughs> that again, was good stuff. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Just, just good routines and things like that. But yeah, taking that basically like, that's a good foundation. Now we're like, okay, you need to work on this, this, this ground yeah. ball progression 
space, but really focusing on like your three lane, like, you know, really focusing on your, because your backhand's not there. So like, you got to put more emphasis on that. And I just found that that was a little bit more buy-in uh, of it. And, but like you're saying, I think that's where you can get, uh, you can hold kids accountable why, why you're not starting, you know, and yeah. what you're not, or if you're, if you're going to continue doing this, like you can't play, you know, cause like you, you can't consistently make the same mistake and us not see the, the work that you're putting in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like, I like those two, but like really just those, the, the armed forces and really the quality of bats, like that's what I can really manage. And like, we can post and we can, you know, make sure that we're teaching off of that and having good conversations. Um, and then the individual one for defensive is, is where we definitely need some help where, I guess the most important part is getting it to the kids and letting them see it. I think that's where, like, like you said, I totally agree. Yeah. I think if like, and that's even phenomenal where you can give it back to them off the road trip so they can see it right away. And like this summer, like I would put it part of the group chat. I would just take screenshots, put it out in the group chat and say, here's our updated pitching stats, you know, where we were. Uh, you can see that this guy dominated first two out of three, um, you know, and, and, and so this is why he did well. Yeah. yeah. And that's where it was. But I think that's where you hit I it on the head is where you can, if look, we're already sending it out to you. That's where it was. I, where I really dropped the ball younger wise. Like, and we had TPI, like we, we, I really, I love that part of it. Um, but like, that's where it was. I was dropped where I think the seek the sauce is where you give it out to the team and they can put see it back it in. And you post yep. it. Like that's where it is. But you can't, like you said, there's so many charts. You can't do them all. You can't, that's yeah. not realistic. And and then we're we're on huddle and we're doing video and I mean there's just so many things. At some point I'm like if if we do all of these things, we're never going to practice. Right. Right. And I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> I'm not I'm going to be up till midnight trying to get all these things done and tally and everything and posting them this and then and then, and then I got to practice tomorrow. Then I got to then I got to then I got to I got to teach. Yeah. I got to teach. I got to go to school. I got my kids got to get to school, you know, like, it's just like, you know, yeah, you just, I, like I found yeah. those are the two things. Cause if you can compete in the box and you can compete on the bumps, yes. that's where it's at. And then, okay, I, here's, you're struggling. Like we can, here's a sample size. Like you're struggling with the balls. You're left or you're struggling with the, with like our summer guys, like this summer, like the beginning of it was like, you could, they couldn't catch the one ball. Like it was, they were just too, they were just yeah. too slow to the one ball, the one ball that was just, slow roller to them like slow take, roller just slow roller like that's where that's where it was at and and it was just and then it was a matter of do you have like the progression stuff do you have that instruction down where then you can take that on your own come back you know because like you said some of these guys are weekend guys but like they have to have a set do, do you know what to do you yeah. know especially on a team like yours where you know these kids are from all over right so it's what are you going to do on your own time to make sure when you show up next weekend the same thing doesn't happen. Right. And I, and I think that's like, for me is, is where the things have changed. And like, I'm like, I'm learning and keep trying to get better and trying to make the best out of this kind of regional travel ball. And, and where I can have like, cause right now what, what what's great about COVID it kind of showed us that we can have this relationship, you know, like here you are in Grove city and I'm, we can sit here and have a great conversation. I can do this with my team. Like, on every Wednesday, we can sit here like, here's what we're going to do. Like, have you got done these things? And it's kind of like a yeah. check-in. But I'm just kind yeah. of holding kids accountable to those things. And do you have a progression? Do you have a throwing program? You know, and we'll have those conversations like you have. Like, okay, how's your throwing program going to go? What do you have? What are you doing? How'd you feel like it? What did you feel the day after you got done? The day before? The day of? So I think just to build those things in. It is It is interesting because some of our kids, will they'll play on other, you know, other travel teams and be like coach like some of these kids they don't they don't know any throwing program like nope. they don't i'm like crazy you it know crazy, but man. you know i'm like now you feel like you're prepared though so mm -hmm. you're in a place where you can now teach that kid mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um it is it is interesting like this summer we really tried to take a different approach we lifted on mondays and wednesdays every morning at 7 a.m okay um because then a lot of times our kids were leaving Wednesday afternoon, Thursdays, they're totally gone for the weekend. Okay. Um, so you're we talking in the summer. Two, yeah. So all okay. summer we left Monday and Wednesday at seven and then we do on field workouts on Tuesdays at 8 AM. Okay. So whatever you didn't get a chance to do, if a kid is a pitcher for us, but he doesn't pitch on a summer team cause he's, 
you know, is not as elite as some of those other kids on his team. Right. That He'll may be where he throws his, throws his pen. Right. Um, so awesome. everybody's a little bit different. Yep. And what they had to work on. Yep. And it's awesome. I and see. it gave us a chance this summer to really teach our base running to our incoming freshmen. Yep. Because they've never seen a lot of that stuff. Absolutely. Base running is coached up. You can tell a lot yeah. by a team by a team of how they run the bases, for sure. How coached up they are. Uh, will you will you all like weightlifting? Will you run that through the through your season too, through the yes. spring. So we'll we start back up in September. So we'll lift yeah. um, two days in September as a team, mm -hmm. and then the third time we do like a kind of like body weight on field on the track sprint kind of stuff workout so they we try to get them three workouts that way in the fall okay. and then come winter then we lift three days a week um and again like we're always telling our guys like if you're only lifting two days or three days we're probably not going to get the body change that we want so you need to pick up that other day and try to try to make kids accountable to hold their own of it as well mm -hmm. you know so well, it's just like, it's just even yeah. like practice. Like I, we can schedule as much as you want, like even during your spring practices and how you're able to do run like your preseason. And that's all great. But like, what's going to make you even better is like the little bit extra that you're going to do. Yeah. And, and it's a, it's always like that constant message. And, and, and it's like, what are you doing a little bit more? Like, it's just this, like I said, it's just more of the sauce of, of like, if you can do a little bit more than expected, like that's always where you'll yeah. separate yourself. And I think the, the big one for us is we've, we've always been trying to find a way to get two lifts in during the season. Mm. So, and that's always such a challenge. Like some weeks will get rained out. So the next week you're playing seven. Mm. So trying to find a way to sneak in lifts um, to keep those guys strong throughout the season um, has been a challenge. So, so, so you really just depend on the week and you just try to win. Yeah. And then you, will you try to do that before school? You try to do that after, maybe after a game? Yeah, we try to do it after practice or after a game is what we usually try to do. Okay. Because um, I, I honestly, I don't want want to wake those guys up early when I feel like they're already tired during our season. Yeah. So that's just kind of my thought on that. But yeah, well, I like it. I do yeah. agree that I think it is a, yeah, a way that you can get it in for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like, oh, our guys are getting skinnier. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's not too many there's not too many elite baseball players and even college baseball players that they look skinny. You know, like Chris Sale is like, you know, that's he's maybe the the only one that comes yeah. to mind that it's just a little bit skinny. You know, but he's still what six five. You know, exactly. Like, he's got I mean, some long yeah. appendages. Yes, yes. Um, so I think he just looks skinny just because he's so tall. But you know, yeah, they don't look like cross country runners. You know, great no. baseball players. We don't. So no, I agree, man. That's it's awesome. Great stuff. Like that was, that's so super good. And I think you said so many like authentic, awesome, great coach stuff that you just talked about today, man. I really appreciate it, man. It was awesome. Uh, uh, if anybody want to talk more baseball, me. oh, you bet, man. If anyone want to talk more baseball, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Um, You can always hit me up on Twitter. Oh. Uh, I'm Coach A8 on there. Um, Co email me. You said Coach 8? Coach A8. Coach A. Coach A8? Yep. yep. Okay. And then my email is ryan.alexander at swcsd.us. Anybody can email me on there as well. Coach Ryan Alexander, just showing how just a great coach he is from all the real answers, from the real talk, how, how one thing is not going to work for everyone, how he's changed, how he's adapted to where – being on the whistle for a throwing program has changed to where kids actually will come in and say, here's the kind of throwing program that I want to do and how he expects them to own their own program by giving him the kind of plan that they're going to do. But then as a coach being there to say, here's how it's working, how do you feel, asking the question, communicating with them in order to do it. So extremely great coach, Coach Alexander from Grove City, uh, Grove City High School in Ohio, just uh, doing some great stuff, um, great stuff in the community. As they do their mulch sale, as in knowing like how important the softball tournament is for their community, as they do their community service there, uh, as they continue to have 
classroom sessions, alumni come back and speak uh, to working out with them and uh, giving rewards and competitions for their dirtbag mentality, being nasty, you know, as they continue to grow that culture and continue to live that culture uh, was great, great examples of just what it means to run a, a great program. And um, those kids are at Grove, uh, Grove City are definitely lucky to have Coach Alexander, and I'm very fortunate myself to be able to have a great conversation with them and, and be able to learn from him myself as we continue to grow the game. So, um, again, big thanks to also to Will Miner and the Ending Professionals for being our uh, p- podcast host, sponsor, and uh, love being part of the Netting Pros family chat family. So, again, thank you for those guys at Netting Pros. Coach Alexander, can't thank you enough, man. Appreciate all the time and consideration. Uh, love talking baseball with you here this morning. and So please continue to share and see if it's going to help anybody else get better. Be happy to help. Feel free to email me at treytcobb at gmail.com. Follow me at Coach3Cobb on Twitter as we continue to help grow the game and help keep getting better ourselves. So until next week, keep getting better.